what is called as the ICD. So ICD, what does it stand for, especially in cardiology, is implantable cardioverter defibrillator. So, so we are going to talk about this uh, special device in uh, using these uh, following topics. So let's try to go. So on an overview basis, uh, these are the further subtopics which we are going to deal in our presentation. So one of the common uh, question always comes is, how did the ICDs evolve first? So it was way back in 1970, the patent was granted for the first um, uh, ICD which was implantable in fact, okay. So what had happened is, and uh, it was granted to uh, Dr. Mirosky, in fact. So if we we'll try to look in the history, so there were external uh, defibrillators or internal defibrillators as well. However, they were not implantable. So later on, like uh, around 1985, the first ICD market release was done. Okay, and it was a limited release, in fact. And um, even after that as well, a lot of uh, changes has been going on in the evolution of this device. So the DDD mode, the DR mode, or otherwise the ICD use uh, associated with the resynchronization therapy as well. So what does the system actually consist of? The system actually consists of... Uh, uh, normally the maybe a atrial lead a ventricular lead as well and uh, it does have different functions for the atria and for the ventricle for example for the ventricle of course it's uh, quite commonly used for the vt prevention anti-tachycardia pacing the cardioversion or even for defibrillation as well similarly the something which is common for the atrium and ventricle it can also be used for the bradycardia sensing and pacing and also for the anti-tachycardia pacing as well. So let's try to have a look in the components. What does the ICD consist of? So actually ICD consists of a connector block, an antenna, uh, then something is called as a read switch, which is used for telemetry, and it also of course has a battery, then a high voltage transformer, and also a capacitor. So a lot of times uh, we start feeling amazed that how is the high voltage is created. So for example, you know, the battery tends to have like, you know, just a few volts. How is it? So using the power of the transformer, this is the one which transforms or multiplies the voltage. And then comes the role for capacitor. Capacitor is the one which stores the high energy for use in fact and whenever there is uh, a need according to that a high voltage shock is delivered on demand in fact so we can see it uh, over here and this is how uh, uh, see one thing is you know using the voltage amplifier yes pacing voltage is applied however when a uh, much high energy is needed for the shock so for example up to 800 volts it is with the usage of voltage capacitor, in fact. So, yes, it ha does have a battery. So, with the passage of time, it starts to come down. So, this is what is called as a phenomenon of battery depletion as well. So, how does it go? Uh, and a lot of times, we will also have to see that, uh, that when should the battery be replaced, in fact. Okay. So... There are two parameters on the basis of which you can predict it. Once is like when the battery level goes down, and the second thing is when the charge time is increased. So the charge time is inversely proportional to the battery. It means if the battery is higher, the charge time is less. If the battery is lower, the charge time is vice versa always. This is how it goes. For example, if you will try to look carefully about the relationship of the battery and the charge okay so with the passage of time of course it is going to come down okay and this is the time for uh, when you should try to think for the change of the battery in fact so what is the importance 
So a lot yeah. of times, no, because why are we really bothered so much and all? Because we are aware if if someone is getting a critical arrhythmia, it's like a VF, ventricular fibrillation, so longer will be the charge time, longer this rhythm is going to continue and it can be definitely a big problem for the patient as well. So this is the reason you want shorter uh, time, right? So that is why you have to be aware of the physics as well, what is happening. So for example, even in the connector block, if you look carefully, this is the port through which the leads are entered. And similarly, then comes the set screws over here, okay? And then, in the ICD connector blocks, so if you look carefully, these are the, so this is, this type is called as the active can, okay? And this is what is called as the non-active cans. So these designs are slightly different. So for example, for this is how it looks like for a single chamber. And with four ports, for example, for the dual chamber, okay? So there are various changes in the design as well, so which you can see it over here. So nowadays, if you will try to look uh, carefully, so this is how you can see over there. So for example, there can be a set of like six screws in fact. Six screws, so if you try to see like, uh, then there is other older design as well, so which has only like two set screws. And this is how you can have a look in the different dimensions for that. So now coming to the, what about the components which are for the high voltage leads? So it can be used, uh, ICD can be um, placed on the outer surface of the heart which is called as epicardium. Otherwise it can be introduced in the heart through a vein. So that is the one which is called as transvenous. So transvenous is the one which is done by the cardiologist or the electrophysiologist in fact. However, the epicardial ones is the one which is normally placed by a surgeon. So now coming to the transvenous leads, so they are of different types. Which uh, so um, uh, the fixation of those leads can be done passively, actively as well with the screws. Otherwise, some of these leads they don't even need any fixation at all. So if you look carefully at these tines, so this is what is the passive tines. So you have to just go inside and just uh, do a tuck test and okay, if they seem to be fixated, just leave it. Otherwise for active fixation, you must screw in these leads in fact over here. So now coming to the transvenous leads, so if you look carefully, so there are two types. So one is a single coil, okay, so the coil lies in the right ventricle, otherwise something called as the dual coil. So the dual coil, one of the coils is going to be there in the superior vena cava and the other one will be in the right ventricle in fact. So if you are trying to have a look over here, uh, especially with the connector pins, other ones which goes and gets screwed in fact, then the proximal coil will be there and then will be the distal coil. There are some newer modifications as well of such devices which is available. So for example, yes, this is a typical one, really nice one. So high voltage leads. So as you can see, there is a single wire which is literally coming out, which is already having the SVC coil and also the RV coil and also then those screwing leads which is coming up over here. So if you are going to uh, look carefully, there are various types of tips which is available, which I already said it to you. So there is something that is also called as the steroid lead tip as well. So they try to put up a steroid illusion, okay. So this is a special chemical which is put up just at the distal tip of the uh, coil over here. So if you look carefully. So in fact, uh, it does has its advantages, advantages in the terms of, so when they try to do a histopathological examination, so they tr saw that there are various benefits of the steroid in this sense like it not only reduces acute trauma and inflammation, but also rapid tissue damage repair is there and also causes reduced fibrosis in fact. Okay, so what is the ultimate reason, for example, you know, whenever a lead is being designed is of course we are all interested in the optimal tissue contact. Okay, so now coming uh, to uh, further of the details, so these leads, 
can actually have two types of circuit. One is for the pacing and sensing, which is the typical function of the pacemaker, I would say, and the extra function, which is unique for the ICDs, okay, is shocking. So the pacing and sensing tends to definitely happen in a bipolar fashion. Bipolar fashion, I have already explained in some of my previous lectures. You can always go back and refer to them. So even in this, I will try to say something. So what happens is, if you will see over here, the electrical circuit, so there is a negative uh, uh, tip, which is called as a cathode, okay? And the anode is a positive electrode. So at the ring or the coil, so that is the one which makes the circuit complete in the terms of bipolar configuration. So what happens is, yes, again, the bipolar can be true or integrated. In terms of, so for example, in the integrated bipolar catheter, it tends to use RV coil. The RV coil is going to be anode. Okay. And uh, the tip is the one which will be having the cathode. So, it will be negative in fact. So, similarly, in the bipolar one, the other one, so, you know, uh, as we had already said it, like it tends to have a dedicated ring, which is there as an anode in fact, okay. So, this also has slightly importance. Importance why? Because whenever any kind of uh, tip is being used in the ICD, so it may be slightly variable. So slightly variable in terms of design, the screwing leads, those uh, tentacles over here, which you can see it in the integrated bipolar leads, in fact. So now coming to the shocking circuit. So what does the shocking circuit consist of? So as I already said, it, it there can be single coil. There can also be a dual coil. So in the single coil, there's a single high voltage coil per lead. Okay, in the RV. Otherwise, if you want, uh, even in terms of extra HV coil or patches. And it will be having like one or two connector pins, in fact. Similarly, it can also have something called as a dual coil as well. So, which will be having two high voltage coils per lead. Okay, RV plus superior vena cover. Or otherwise also, and it also has like three connector pins. So, there are uh, definite international standards which has to be followed for whenever these connector pins are used for these devices. And in fact, uh, uh, one of the other important things is like when the shock is being delivered, how are those vectors? So for example, the pathway in which the high energy is delivered, okay? So, it will be determined by the electrodes which is used. So, it will be having three electrodes. HVA, HVB, HVX. So, A is the for active device, B for RV coil. Similarly, HVX is for the optional HV electrode, in fact, okay? So, these are some of the examples of the different vectors which is being used over here in the different types of ICD over here. Similarly, the shocking circuit, which is there uh, using the different vectors. You can see in this clear diagram very well. Okay, so one of the other important things to see, implantation of a device is not the most technical thing, but however, the main thing is always is programming. Because once the devices will be put up, the patient is going to be dependent upon the programming for its lifelong. Okay. So, of course, it's quite long. So, one of the common things which is important is what are the different automated functions? So, automated functions is the sensing, detection, and the therapy. So, the sensing is in terms of EGM signal, the sensing circuit, the marker channels, and similarly for the detection, you are using the magnet. So, they will be doing this uh, SVT discrimination, the read detection, or the detection zooms. Similarly, how is the rate and how about the duration? Similarly, about the therapy as well. So, for example, the therapy, it has different types of therapies, bradycardias, or like bradyarrhythmias. Bradyarrhythmias will be having different pacing modes, parameters, so therapies will be there. Similarly, the tachyarrhythmias. 
it has its own anti-tachycardia pacing as well or maybe cardioversion or the defibrillation as well. So now coming to, to let's try to understand its different functions. So what is sensing actually? So the, the device tends to have a brain, I would say, on its own, in which the device tends to see. But see what? See, it's trying to see the electrical activity. And in fact, the lead contains the eyeball of the device. Okay, and the range of the eyeball is determined by the polarity. So how does it depend? So what happens is in the true bipolar sensing, the tip to ring, smaller surface area and it will be more localized sensing as well. Similarly, the tip to coil is the larger surface area and the broad sensing area which is there in terms of integrated bipolar sensing. So these are the things. So integrated bipolar sensing will have a larger surface area. However, the true bipolar sensing will have a very smaller surface area. Okay. And now coming to... So... How does the device tends to see? So what happens is the device tends to continuously watch the electrical activity. And whatever electrical signals are also passing through the device as well, it is going to keep on observing. Similarly, it also produces a, you know, the EGM. So what is called as the intracardic EGM. So to understand actually, sensing is actually a process of identifying a cardiac depolarization from an intracardiac EGM, okay? So we have already explained this principle as well. So what is happening is if whenever a wave or a depolarization is coming towards, it will be seen as positive. When it is going away, it will be seen as negative. So for example, for a cathode, okay? It will be seen like this and the anode will be slightly different or, you know, slightly delayed. So that is why on an overall basis, on a net basis, so for example, on an overall basis, you are going to set the net depolarization wave is going to be like this, okay? So how are you going to measure the EGM signal? So it is measured by amplitude. Amplitude is the peak-to-peak -peak measurement. In terms of height, you can say similarly, and it is measured in millivolts. So then there is something else called a slew rate. So what is slew rate? Is the speed of deflection change over time, and which is measured in volts per second. So this is how you can uh, define it. So for example, for typical ventricular EGM. So normally, you know, it's more than 5 millivolts for the optimal sensing. So about the slew rate tends to measure the peak-to-peak -peak changes in the voltage over time. So that is why it is defined as dv by dt. Okay. So the coming to the near field, the electrodes are close in range. Okay. And commonly a narrow signal, which is less myocardial in range. Okay. It will be seen for used for arrhythmia detection. So, as I had already said it about the different types over here, so the tip-to-tip -tip ring, which is in terms of bipolar, or the concept of integrated bipolar. So, in sinus rhythm, this is how uh, the deflection is going to be seen over here, okay? And in terms of VT. So, one of the un other important concepts, whenever we are trying to... Uh, think for any EGM signal is near field and far field. So what is it? Near field actually. So near field is the electrodes are close in range, okay? And the there will be narrow signal. So why? If it is narrow signal, because there's less myocardium in the range. And it is very important, especially for the arrhythmia detection, in fact. Similarly, coming to the far field, what is happening is electrodes are further in range, in fact. So they are not close in range, but far, a little far away. And how the, the EGM source is, of course, variable most of times, and it tends to cover more myocardium and, in fact, can resemble a surface ECG. So, for example, um, 
if uh, sometimes the range can be different in terms of for example from the can to the rv coil the rv coil is over here kept in the rv similarly the you know the source can sometimes be from the rv coil to the svc coil okay so it's a pretty different and wide range as well now coming to the morphology comparison so this is how the sinus rhythm is going to look like so this will be pretty narrow okay and the ventricular tachycardia so now coming to the sensing circuit so what is happening over here so uh, upon being seen a signal is transported through the sensing circuit so from the amplifier it goes to the bandpass filter through the rectifier and finally to the level detector so the role of amplifier is to enlarge the signals and the bandpass filter is the one which tends to filter the unwanted signal similarly the rectifier is the one which flips the signal to give a, a positive one so this is how normally signal will be there which is going to be flipped by the rectifier and finally at the level of detector it is going to affect with the sensitivity settings okay and finally then the device is going to respond let's try to understand further by giving you an example so this, this is how the small signal comes over here the amplifier is going to make it a little bit bigger and then finally comes the bandpass filter which is going to filter it further so a lot of some extra noises and all unnecessary noise is going to be filtered and taken off finally it goes to the rectifier is the one which is going to give a mostly positive deflection over here and finally will come the role of level detector okay uh, about the sensitivity an important question is how to set the sensitivity let's try to understand it so what happens is um, sensitivity is defined as the minimum amplitude of the electrical signal that registers as a sensed event okay and, and it is set in terms of millivolts or even programmable settings so for example this is how a uh, typical deflection is seen over here however if you are going to take a sensitivity of 0.15 so you are going to sense it only in this range similarly if you are going to take you know 0 0.3 so what is going to happen is of course the t wave is also gone p wave is also gone in fact so you will not be able to see so that is why there is a smart mode as well what is called as the auto adjusting which is going to keep on adjust according to the deflections which is going to be present so in the sinus rhythm yes um, uh, yeah you can have program sensitivity settings so you will be able to predict how much is the p wave uh, amplitude or the t wave amplitude or even the qrs according to that you can plan it up however when the mm, setting changes to a dangerous uh, dangerous arrhythmia like the vf what is going to happen then so that that is the time uh, like it is better to, or preferred to have a auto adjusting sensitivity so what about auto adjusting sensitivity as i was already telling you so there are different rules for it okay in terms of the decay constant so if you look carefully in this diagram it explains it especially its role in fact okay how does it happen and how does it help further so the another concept if we want to have a good understanding about the ICD is about the threshold start hmm? so what about threshold start threshold is actually what is really happening is if you look over here there are two like similar sensed refractoriness over here so for example for the ventricle so what is happening over here in the initial one the max r wave amplitude is measured at 4 millivolt however the second one is at 7 millivolt 
and this is happening the when the R wave sensing is kept at 2 millivolts and this the, in the second one it is kept at around 3 millivolts so this is the importance for this so what is happening is the decay delay holds the sensitivity threshold at the starting value for a programmable amount of time okay so one of the co question comes what are the consequences of under sensing so can anyone answer what are the consequences of under sensing hmm? can anyone answer that So what are the consequences of under sensing? It will be fail to treat the VT that can accelerate to VF. Okay, okay. So how to make it better? Please because use the please use please use the chat box because there's a lot of noise. I would really because these lectures are being recorded, okay, for the benefit of students. So it creates a lot of noise as well. Hmm. So what is happening is, if you are not, if you are, you are not sensing well, or otherwise there is like under sensing. So what is going to happen is, VF will be there, and you will not be able to see those VT or even VF as well. And of course, it can be very fatal. And those are the times when you want to give them a therapy which should be appropriate and as soon as possible. So a lot of times this is what is going to happen is it is the one which is going to lead to inappropriate therapy, okay? And there is potential for inducing fatal arrhythmias. And the patient tends to suffer due to the inappropriate therapy in that, okay? So uh, there are different components as well, what you call it the marker channel. Marker channel's role is for the display, in fact. Um, Hello? Hello? Yeah, sir, how can we understand this is under sensing or over sensing? Okay, I'm going to give you some more examples and I will show you over here, okay? Let me just, and in the end, we will try to take everyone's question as well. So, in the meantime, as I was trying to tell you about the display, so about the display, what is happening is, um, so as I was, so, uh, it has its different annotations in the terms of sensing, detection, therapy, and other information as well. So what is happening is coming to the detection. So what does typically detection actually mean? So for example, what it means is of course is, uh, you know, is there a device defined arrhythmia which is present, which is being sensed. So what is going to happen is of course it is going to uh, sense it on the basis of two parameters. The two parameters is going to be the rate and also the duration. So it is going to be measured in the beat to beat intervals in milliseconds, otherwise beats per minute. Similarly, so this is going to classify the rhythm by detection zone into two zones. So one will be the ventricular tachycardia or the ventricular fibrillation in fact. And and of course, you, you can uh, prog program in the range of the rates. So, for example, for you have to keep a range of the heartbeat. So, for example, for VT, you try to keep it in terms of like 162 to 188 uh, beats per minute. Similarly, for the VF, it is 188 beats per minute and even faster. So, while trying to measure you try to measure it in terms of numbers of interval to detect. So that is NID or length of time to detect. Similarly, programmable by beat or interval counters or consecutive, for example, consecutive in terms of like 16 beats which is there within the detect zone or similarly probabilistic in terms of percentage of fraction. 
so which is in terms of like 12 out of 16 bits which is going to be there within the detect zone okay so what is happening is so for example this is your interval which you are going to uh, referring to so this is how is the ecg coming up over here okay and the vt interval so it is going to keep on checking okay yes 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 so so what is happening is over here if you would have set the nid is going to be like 16 so only after 16 beats over here then the detection of the vt is going to happen okay so like the 16 beat window so similarly this is how is happening for the vf so this is going to calculate and at the end of the 16 bits, it is going to give a final diagnosis of VF, in fact. However, for example, if there is a non-sustained VT. So in the non-sustained VT, if a patient has had like only 4 beats, so it is not going to detect the VT. Okay. Unless or until it is going to meet the duration criteria in terms of if it is going to be sustained. So sustained, you can see sustained definition is, what is this definition of sustained VT? Sustained definition is more than how many seconds? Anyone? Use the chat box, please mute your microphone. Please mute your microphone, use the chat box. Please use the chat box. So, if it is going to be more than 30, that is the one when it is considered as sustained. So, a lot of times, see, uh, we all are aware of SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, is different from the ventricular tachycardia, right? So, similarly, even the ICD has been made smart enough to be able to differentiate the SVT versus the VT. So how the SVT discrimination is going to happen? So the SVT discriminators will be, uh, they are the ones which is going to prevent the de detection of the tachyarrhythmias which is caused by a SVT to prevent inappropriate, unnecessary ther therapy, okay? So uh, how does it work? So it depends upon First of all is the waveform morphology in terms of EGM width, the wavelet, and even in terms of the onset of arrhythmia and the stability of arrhythmia. And similarly, it also depends upon the relationship between the P and R wave. Uh, however, for this, uh, to understand the P and R wave relationship, uh, a dual chamber, uh, at least otherwise, a uh, atrial lead is definitely required for that, in fact. So, what is going to happen is this is going to measure and store the QRS characteristics of a normal sinus beat and it identifies the SVT versus VT based on the QRS changes that occurs in the most ventricular tachycardias. So, as you may notice, so during this is the ECG recording during the sinus rhythm, this is the one during the VT. So, how do you discriminate? So, as I already said it to you that there are various discrimination parameters for that. So, what is happening is, first of all, uh, there can be further parameters like the match threshold uh, uh, programming. In terms of, so for example, unless and until it is going to, uh, uh, you know, uh, it is going to match it well, so it is going to have, uh, the with the lower percentage of the match threshold programming, it is more likely to withhold appropriately. So, which is going to be less likely for the detecting the true VT in fact. So, there will be a higher percentage of the match threshold programming and less likely for the appropriately withhold, okay, which is going to be more likely to detect the true VT in fact. So, this is very, very important again, as I was telling you. So, for example, what happens is, so it will not be, not only be able to uh, evaluate the acceleration of the ventricular rate, but also discriminates between the gradual rate increase and also the abrupt rate increase, in fact. And it determines the, whether VT is present if the rate is abrupt. Because also remember, 
this is how you try to differentiate even in clinical basis as well like whether VT is there or SVT is there as well okay or is it a sinus tachycardia or is it really like a VT so VT is most commonly they get triggered with a VPB otherwise the most time commonly the onset is acute onset or you know all of a sudden so similarly when on for example the it averages four beats and compares with an averages of previous four beats so which is multiplied by the program onset percentage okay and the onset is met if the recent average is less than the previous so how does it happen so this is how is the recording over here okay so if you look carefully there's this marker channel so in the marker channel you will be noticing different symbols so vs 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 so all of them are ventricle seen sensed okay then comes the cycle length cycle length is 540 30 5 20 30 20 500 490 so gradually it is increasing so when they calculate it over here so over here the average of first four beats is 530 milliseconds however the average of next four beats is 460 milliseconds so it is highly likely what do you think is it met or not met so this is actually a <laughs> Uh, algorithm which is used in the Medtronic devices. So what it shows is the SVT discriminator is not met in fact for that. So on the uh, basis of the uh, premise that the AF conducts irregularly on the ventricle okay and then you can discriminate the regular from the irregular intervals within a detect zone. So let's try to have a look over here. So this is the range which you are seeing over here okay so you can look it over here the ventricle scenes then there is a trigger okay over here but when you try to look carefully at the cycle length what is happening over here the cycle length is changing right and in fact so much so that so when you will be seeing for example the range for this is more than the difference is more than 50 milliseconds especially when you will try to compare with the previous three so it again shows that when you will try to again see in the next beats, it is not the same cycle length. So the 470 becomes 480, 440, 500. So it again shows us this is very unstable. So this is how you will be detecting the AF as well. So you always have to uh, be careful whenever you are trying to detect from the SVT from VT. Consider the relationship of P and R. Okay. Similarly, for the dual chamber, yes, if it is going to be dual chamber, it was going to be much more easier and never depend upon only uh, one algorithm. Try to apply as many algorithms as possible. This is going to make your diagnosis more and more better. So what is happening is over here, you should try to avoid the bigeminal, okay, and then you should look at the VT detection algorithm, try to then compare the ventricular frequency. V and A is in fact, okay. If V is less than the A, so then you should try to look for the morphology. Similarly, and the stability factor as well. Similarly, if V is, v is equal to A, then again, morphology is dependent like almost for the 45 percent okay and for that then you can try to look on the onset for example okay so this is how you should look like so what it may look like for it could be sinus tachycardia it could be atrial flutter it could be atrial fibrillation or even one is to one svt and how it works about the analysis as i had already said it is try to look on the rate regularity the pattern and also the av association for that so there is a uh, interesting, uh, I would say, algorithm which is called as PR logic. PR logic is what is happening is it tends to distinguish the SVTs by analyzing the P wave and the R wave. In fact, so it tends to see about the number 
and position of the atrial events relative to the ventricular event. So that is where it is going to happen. Look, for example, is it junctional? Is it retrograde? Or is it anti-grade, in fact? So if someone is having a little bit of understanding of the EP lectures, which I had already spoken earlier, so they can understand what is the meaning of junctional, retrograde, or anti-grade. So on the basis of definitely that, how much is the millisecond difference between the A and the V? So for example, if one will see over here, this beat is quite a lot ahead of the V, right? So this is more of an anti-grade. Similarly, is it a retrograde? So this is what is happening. So for example, if you will see PQRST, PQRST is the uh, ECG recording which you get. So when you are trying to see in the intracardiacs, so you will see PR, PR. So like it is the atrium ventricle, atrium ventricle, AV, AV, AV. So this will be diagnosed as the sinus tachycardia using the NID method. So similarly, over here, what do you notice? There are so many A's compared to the V. So many A's compared to the V. So many A's compared to the V. However, these A's are mostly irregular. So the detection criteria which is met for the AF. So what is happening over here? Can someone try to say, so using the PR logic, Mm -hmm. Okay, and so as I was telling you, PR logic is standing for three things, okay, anterograde, retrograde and junctional. So what is happening over here? So what is happening over here is, it is almost junctional, right? but not absolutely junctional. So, in terms like V is almost pretty close. However, if you look carefully, so this we call it as short VA interval. Short VA interval is less than 70 milliseconds. And this is what is happening. So, for this will be a, almost in like junctional zone. So, this is an example of typical AV and RT. What is called as the slow fast AV nodal re-entry tachycardia. Okay, so this we were able to understand. So what would the far field, our wave sensing in the atrium channel? So the logic of the far field, our wave sensing is they try to identify and also withhold the therapy. For example, for the consistent short long pattern. So what is happening over here? So we can notice there's an even in the atrial EGMs, there is a ventricular far field which is recorded over here, right? So this is a big A. So of course this is a atrial recording, and there is a smaller uh, ventricular far field. Similarly, this is the same thing which is happening over here as well. Okay, so this is how it will be seen over here. So, uh, have, has anyone seen the application of magnet? So, what tends to happen when a magnet is applied over an ICD? So, what happens is, yes, uh, different manufacturers have their own settings as well. So, they may respond to magnets in a different way. So, what happens is, it should be ideally used whenever a surgery is being planned or otherwise a temporary suspension is being planned, for example, over the permanent programming, okay? And the therapy is not guaranteed for that. So, about the automated symptoms, so what are the therapies? Can you name some therapies which are being delivered by an ICD? Mm -hmm. 